Today's video is going to focus on how to catch a rat inside your house. And like mice, rats feed on the same things that mice feed on. Fruits, seeds, and nuts. But rats have a particular interest in water. They need about three to four ounces of water each day to survive. Rats need water more than they do food, whereas mice need food more than they need water. Rats will eat uh, any form of seed, even rice. They uh, love nuts and often they really like dog food because dog food has corn meal and corn and all kinds of seed in there and things in there that they 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 like so they particularly like dog food so it's a good idea not to keep dog food outside especially at night uh, be sure to bring that dog food in now gummy bears on a trap are basically based in in a fruit taste so there are various types of traps you can use to catch a rat once again just as the mice uh, catching a mouse a rat is the same principle you need your traps against the edge of the wall because the rats and mice both follow the perimeter of the wall just as uh, cats and just as many animals and just as many insects follow edges because they feel safer and more secure so when you go to set the trap Many people are very intimidated by rat traps. This is uh, one of the best forms of rat trap there is because it's heavy. It's a little more difficult for a rat to drag it away. It's a good idea, however, to take a string and tie it to this section and tie it to something nearby in case the rat uh, wants to drag the trap away, and that can happen. In a house, it's not so critical, but when you're in a crawl space it's really important to tie that trap. You can take the gummy bear and attach it to this section there. Now if you have another type of trap just make sure that gummy bear is attached nice and tight in there. And then put a little peanut butter over the gummy bear. And once again when it comes just as mouse traps when it comes to setting a trap people are very intimidated by these. But all you have to do is have your hand around it and as long as your hand is around that trap you can do anything you want to that trap and nothing's going to happen to hurt you. So just keep your hand over this side of the trap and you'll be fine. Then when you go to place it just place it over here against the wall and let it go. Now many of these traps have what's called a sensitive and a firm position. F is on this side and S is on the right side. Firm is, is so that in case you want uh, to, if you're in an area where there's a lot of movement and, and things like that, you might want it on a firm setting. Meaning you can move this plate over toward the firm setting. If you want it real sensitive for the rat to trip it, you put it toward the right on the sensitive setting. I usually put it on the firm setting because the rat is going to work hard to get that gummy bear off. Another type of trap are the new plastic types of traps today. And again, you would just put the gummy bear tucked in there nice and tightly with a little bit of peanut butter on the top and then you'd set it up like that. That is not as uh, likely to trip as this one so uh, but then again it's the same principle and uh, um, with these usually what I'll do is I'll just take it and if I want it to trip I will just drop it on the ground and then let it trip. But there again you just put it over here. Again these aren't nearly as sensitive as these are so you can you can move it around fairly easy without having to worry about things. 
even without your hand over it. And again, you put it against the wall. There is a trap called Jaws that is my favorite. It's a plastic trap like this black one. This is called a snappy trap. But the Jaws is, is has it edges against it and it really catches the rat. Sometimes rats are so smart they will get out of that edge and slip out of it. They'll also come over to these traps and they'll learn to get go so fast that they can get that gummy bear or peanut butter off, usually the peanut butter, or they'll even lick it off without it tripping. There's a famous picture of three rats on a pipe hanging down, all three of them, licking the peanut butter off of the tip of the trap. And they're hanging from the pipes with their tails so they don't trip the trap. And that's how incredibly intelligent rats are. Rats work on a, what's called muscle memory. They have very poor sight. So the yellow here is to attract them. But um, they work on a basis called muscle memory. So once they've gone around an item a few times, and at first they're very shy with a trap, but once they've gone around an item a few times, they'll move really quickly around that item with muscle memory. When you first put a trap out, be sure to put a couple of the gummy bears or peanut butter or both on both sides of the trap because the rat will become accustomed to eating that first. The other thing you can do is it'll take sometimes four to seven days before a rat will eat the bait. So you can put bait on here without setting the trap and just set it there without it being set and let him get used to eating that bait and once he's once he's eaten the bait three or four nights in a row uh, and you may have to wait four to seven days before he even approaches that trap and then once he begins to eat the bait then you can set the trap for the rat and it's ready to go now one thing to bear in mind also with uh, rats is that in maintaining and making sure they don't get inside your house, the pipes underneath the kitchen sink should not have a gap of anything more than a quarter inch. So um, if you have, uh, now I've got st steel wool stuffed way in there. But you can stuff steel wool into that around the pipe or a product called stuff it that i mentioned before around that pipe void because a rat will come around those pipe voids and inside so that's something to watch the other area that you have to watch is the washroom inside a washroom you've got that hose that comes in and around that void that that hose is the drain hose where the water drains out and around that void pipes can come up around that drain void and into the into your home so you want to make sure that when you have voids of pipe voids of any kind bathrooms kitchens that kind of thing you want to make sure that those pipe voids are sealed around there nice and tightly with steel wool or the product I mentioned called Stuff It. Another place that they commonly can come into is behind that a dishwasher around the, the pipes or the lines that are going inside. So. That's something also to have a um, someone to come and look at your dishwasher. Make sure that it's nice and tight behind there. Because what they'll do is they'll come up under there from underneath and around and through. If those aren't tight underneath. They'll also go around these from above where that big gap is. So there's all kinds of gaps behind a dishwasher. And so you want to make sure those pipes are nice and tight. 
And the last thing to always be aware of is just make sure that your doorways don't have any gaps in them underneath the gap, underneath the gap of the doorway. And make sure that there are, you don't want anything more than a quarter inch gap. You want less than a quarter inch gap on all doors. Because if you've got a gap underneath that door, the possibility of a rodent getting in is very high. Trapping under your house is just as important as trapping above it. The floors are in the attic. This is the entry of the crawl space. And what you'd want to do is go down deep into the crawl space and uh, put along the edges on each side of every wall at least one trap if you're having an issue inside because there's a very good possibility they're coming from the outside. The other thing you want to be aware of is that there are burrows where Norway rats will burrow underneath the actual entry of the crawl space. The other thing you'll notice is that this gap there, if you close this door, there is wood there to protect it from having a gap, but you want to make absolutely sure that when that closes, there are no gaps at all. Say right there, because the, the entry point is very simple. You get through a quarter, a mouse a quarter inch, a rat a half an inch. So you want to make sure that these are very tight and secure. Uh, you notice there's burrowing here burrowing there, burrowing underneath, and uh, they'll also get the crevices on the side, those crevices. That's where uh, steel wool or uh, some kind of filling uh, product, the product called Stuff It, is very good. You can buy it on, a on Amazon, S-T-U-F-I-T, Stuff It, is what most uh, professionals use today. Finally, some final points regarding the trapping of rodents inside your house. First of all, uh, when it comes to where a rodent resides, you will usually find droppings. Now sometimes you'll find a whole bunch and sometimes you'll only find one or two. Um, some, it, it all depends on where he really is uh, hiding. And you may not even know where that is, it could be behind a wall. But uh, the droppings can be, if they're f fresh, they will be soft. If you take a toothpick, you can tell that it's soft and dark. If they're old, they'll be brown and hard. Um, in the attic, you want to do the same thing you do in the crawl space. You want to, to put uh, one trap per side of the attic walls, if you have them in the attic. Also, always keep one or two traps at the top of your attic entry, right at the entry and at the entry of your crawl space as well, as a routine measure to prevent rats and even mouse traps is a good idea uh, if you have mice primarily in a region. Um, and those two things are also very important to remember um, in uh, preventing rodents. Hope you've uh, enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe. That way you'll be notified of any new videos that come out. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.